Hi, I'm Kevin from Thrush Aircraft. Remember, when you're flying a Thrush, you're never flying alone. With our team of factory experts always on hand to answer any questions or comments you may have. Today we're going to talk about flight control rigging and the importance of checking it every time you do a 100 hour inspection, replace a control surface, or if you do have a pilot that complains about fatigue or engine speeds, things like that, sometimes it may actually be flight control rigging that is the, the cause. First we're going to start talking about the flaps because it's always important that you rig your flaps before you rig your ailerons. We're going to use the flap rigging later as a reference for our aileron rig. So for starting off with our flaps, you want to do this every 100 hours, you want to do this every annual, or if your pilot complains about the aircraft flying a little faster than normal or a little slower than normal. So for your start, you want to verify that you're at zero degrees. So you can use either an arm protractor like this or you can use a digital protractor as well. So you want to be neutral here at zero when we start. For our flap neutral, you want to use a long bar like this, something that is known to be a true straight edge. It can be a piece of um, string even. However, you just have to make sure that it is a true straight edge and you can trust it. Because what we're going to do, we're going to come underneath and whenever you're checking your flight controls for neutral as well as checking degrees, you always want to be in the middle of the flight control. None of them are perfect. They're all going to be slight imperfections as far as twists in the flight control. So to get a true reading, you always want to be in the middle for your neutrals. So we're going to make sure that for our zero position on our flaps, that we're touching the forward spar, the aft spar as much as possible and two places at least here on the flap to make sure that they are both in line as much as is possible. So once we have our neutral set with that adjustment rod, we're going to then set our zero on our protractor and then we'll lower the flaps to make sure they are 15 degrees plus or minus one degree tolerance. In order to make the adjustments as well as to inspect for the stops, we want to remove the panels here um, from the left and right side as well. We want to make sure that we have uh, access to this control rod here so that we can make adjustments to the neutral. So when we do make our neutral adjustment with the bar underneath, we will make that adjustment to this linkage rod here. So for the adjustments, we want to make sure that we have our micro switches here and underneath the left side. We want to have those already set for the top adjustment, but we do want to leave a little bit of space at the top of that micro switch in the up position. We then want to set the down travel to 15 degrees. So that will be done with this other micro switch immediately below it. So underneath the left side of the cockpit here, you'll see there's two micro switches. The top one is your up stop, the bottom one is your down stop. On the inboard side here, there is a set screw you can uh, loosen to slide them up and down on that post. And you also want to make sure that here, you always have a little bit of gap in your up stop so that you do not bottom it out on the flap motor. So once we have our zero set on our flaps, we want to actually lower the flaps and make sure that our micro switches are set properly. So we're going to drop them down. We're going to inspect for 15 degrees, make our adjustments on our micro switches. We always want to make sure that they come back up to a zero neutral position and return as they should. So once we're finished with the flaps, we're going to move on next to the ailerons. The first thing we want to notice about our ailerons, our neutral position will be with the control stick lock engaged. That's how we set our neutral for our ailerons. So once we have neutral set locked on the control stick and all of our bell cranks will need to be squared 90 degrees with the spar, we were going to come here and adjust this linkage rod in the center of the aileron to make it where our neutral position is one to two tenths below the flap here. That's why it's important that we have our flap set first and then even with our outboard on our wingtip there. So this will be our zero position for our ailerons or our neutral position for our ailerons. So once we have our neutral set for the ailerons, we're gonna uh, unlock the control stick and we'll adjust our stops as needed. So next we're gonna actually unlock the control stick so we can check our stops. So the next thing we want to check is our, our aileron travel. So we want to be 17 degrees down and 21 degrees up. So we'll make these adjustments. We're actually going to go underneath the wing. In the center of the wing, there is a stop. We'll actually adjust there. When we're setting our ailerons, we want to make sure that we adjust here in the center bell crank, right under the center of the aileron. We want to be 21 degrees up, 17 degrees down. We want to make sure that we do a paper check with the stops and that when you're done, you do have all of the jam nuts tight. So when we're talking earlier about the bell crank, um, and getting it square with the spar. This is what we're talking about inside the inboard bell crank here. So this will need to be 90 degrees with the aft wing spar. If you're doing an initial aileron installation, you will have to make an adjustment here at this bell crank with this top rod end bearing with the control stick locked in neutral. From there, you can then adjust your bell cranks as well, um, this, the other linkages. 
It's only on a new installation. If you're doing a repair or a reinstallation of an old aileron, this should not be necessary, only on new system installations. One of the other very important things to have your ailerons balanced correctly, you wanna make sure that you have the rigging set to where your up stop for your right is your down stop for your left, so that those all engage at the same time. If not, you will need to make an adjustment. You can do this, like I said, with paper, um, just to make sure that it actually engages and grabs the piece of paper. The other thing we wanna talk about is the aileron trim tab. So whenever we have our ailerons completely rigged left and right, and our neutral, our control stick locked again, we wanna make sure that we adjust the trim tab linkage rod here um, underneath to make sure that it is flush with the top of the wing. If your pilot complains about left wing or right wing heavy, this is the adjustment you want to make. Next thing we wanna talk about is gonna be the elevator rigging. So the big difference between the elevators and a lot of people get this wrong, our elevators are neutral when they are flat with the horizontal like we have here. If you look on the outboard, this should be neutral. It will not be with the control stick and lock. That will actually throw you off a few degrees. It's very important that you note that neutral to the horizontal is our neutral for our, for our elevator rig. Once we have our lock engaged, we wanna bring our protractor, set it to neutral. Zero degrees on the dial. Okay, then we will adjust for our 17 degrees down, 27 degrees up. So, 17 degrees down. So we have 17 degrees down, plus or minus one degree, 27 degrees up. If you have an improper rig, you will note you have some contact here on occasion where the elevator horn meets the stabilizer. So this is a false stop and is dangerous. It'll cause corrosion and eventually damage to the airplane. So we wanna make sure that if you do have any contact here that you adjust your stops underneath the cockpit. So these are your elevator stops here. It's your up stop. This is your down stop engaging here. This is where you will make your adjustments if you need to adjust 17 down and 27 up. Once we finish with our elevators, we wanna to go to our elevator trim tabs. We want to re-engage the elevator neutral position. Now this can be, again, someone with steady hands holding it there at your horizontal to elevator matchup, or you can actually either fabricate or buy one of these uh, from Thrush Aircraft. However, as long as you are in neutral position, you want to make sure that you have neutral here from the elevator trim tab to the elevator here, and then you want to set your zero position on your protractor here. Inside the cockpit, we're gonna actually make our adjustments though. So this will be where we will measure, this will be where we will make our um, neutral, but we will actually do our adjustments inside the cockpit. So this is where we will make our adjustments for our elevator trim tab. You'll notice the black plate here can be loosened up. It is slotted for adjustment. You'll make sure that you are engaging the plate and not the handle itself, or definitely not the flap switch. You also wanna use this for your neutral as well. There's a placard here that you wanna make sure that you're engaging um, there's a takeoff and a neutral position, as well as full forward and full aft. So after we make our adjustments, we want to verify inspections. Eight degrees up, 22 degrees down, plus or minus one degree tolerance. So the last thing we're gonna talk about is our rudder rigging. We're gonna start with a neutral position, very much like we do with our horizontals and our elevators, where your rudder is neutral to your vertical here at the horns. So to do this, we adjust with our rudder gust lock. So once we have our neutral position, we wanna use our arm protractor. We want to set our zero position, and then we will remove our gust lock. Once we remove our gust lock, we will go 24 degrees in each direction left, and 24 degrees in right, plus or minus one degree. So when adjustments are necessary, they will be done here under the belly at these stop bolts here. For any other comments or questions you have about flight control rigging, visit us at www.thrushaircraft.com or find the answers in your maintenance manual.